Good morning, church family. Welcome to our online service, and thank you for joining us this morning. We celebrate today as the sixth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day. Let us have a meaningful service by worshiping God and honoring our mothers. Let us begin our service with an opening hymn for the beauty of the earth, hymn number 92. When we look up in awe to know our Creator, we are humbled because we are in the presence of truth. Let us truthfully acknowledge our need for restoration and empowerment. With that desire, let us pray together. Gracious God, we are grateful to you for all the unconditional love we receive from you each and every day. Like a mother hen, you gather us under your wings and protect us. Your love comforts us and embraces us. Today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we thank you for all the women and the mothers who have nurtured us, strengthened us, and sustained us. You have blessed each one of us with motherly love, and today we ask for your blessings on every mom. Help us to honor and appreciate them every day and throughout our lives. Especially this year, we also ask your blessings on those who mourn the loss of a beloved mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, aunt, daughter, or sister. We too feel their pain and our hearts go out to them. Lord, on this blessed Mother's Day, we ask for your comforting grace and healing touch. Help all of us to find the peace, comfort, and acceptance we so deeply desire. Thank you, Lord, for all the mothers who have helped to shape our lives with their love, which is your greatest gift to each and every one of us. Amen. Let us have a moment of silent meditation and prayer. Hear the words of assurance. Our parent God is present to assure us of unfailing love. The Spirit of God rests upon us with healing power. 
God restores, establishes, and strengthens us. Surely we are blessed. Rejoice and be glad. Sing praises to Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's anthem, As the Clouds Parted, Finale will be dedicated by Deborah Shield and Heather Edwards Wilson. Deborah has something to say about today's anthem. Deborah? Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning. Today is my last installment in my Happiness as the Clouds Parted sequence. The last movement is called Finale. It starts out with a little fanfare first, and then it just has a lot of fun for Heather and I to play. Thank you, Deborah and Heather. Today's children's message will be delivered by Sue Prattis, Abigail, Alyssa, and Rosemary Rabbit. Abigail? Good morning. Today is Mother's Day, so don't forget to give your mom a hug and a thank you for all she does for you. Hi, Abigail. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Aw, thank you. 
I think we're ready for our day. Uh, let me check my bag. Hmm, goodness. We'll be needing these. We're heading out for some errands today. Ah, oh, flashlight. Never know when you need one of those. Thank you for the wallet. Ah, sunscreen. I'm thinking big these days. Extra mask. <laughs> you know how it goes. Ah, forgive me. Oh, a favorite brush. What do you think, Abs? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, why do you have so many things in your bag? Well, it's good to be prepared. You never know what you're going to need. Okay, Mom, I get it. All those things may help take care of us if we need them. I'm getting a bit thirsty. Hmm, I thought you'd say that. Here you go. <laughs> wow, Mom, you really are <laughs> good at thinking of everything we need. Where are we going? Well, we're going to pick up some food for Mother's Day brunch. It's a very, very special Mother's Day. Both of your grandmothers will be joining us. Here they are! Hi. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Grandmas! Thank you. Well, thank you! So, how do you do it, Mom? Well, goodness, being a mom is wonderful. The best job I ever had. Um, it can certainly be challenging as well. I remember those very busy days. The children are in my thoughts and prayers every day. Moms do need help along the way. We all rely on something we need that we may not be able to see, but is always there for us. Yes, love and our faith. God gave us Jesus to show us perfect love. He told us to love God and one another. When things get challenging, God gives mothers the strength to endure, and his love is a shining example to follow. When we turn to God, he is there for us. We are very blessed as grandparents to have grown children now who are wonderful parents to our grandchildren. We don't have to wait till Mother's Day to honor and thank our moms. We should do that every day. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Lord, who guides us and protects and loves us each day, bless all moms and help them feel your love and support as they nurture their children and teach them to live in faith and love with you. Amen. 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 Thank you for your inspiring message for Mother's Day. Thank you. Now, let's share our joys and lift up our concerns and prayers. Today is Mother's Day. Let's make our mothers happy today. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Last Sunday, during our in-sanctuary service, we dedicated a memorial plaque and our new altar drapes in memory of Marianne Piga, one of our church's saints. Last Tuesday, through our special charge conference, we approved the sale of the Smith Street land. Thank you for your attention and support. Here are some concerns and prayer requests. Recently, Marilee Drew Schooler's son, Michael, had a heart attack, and he is home now and recovering well. Thanks be to God. Ray and Marilyn Beck's grandson, Jason, is going through a difficult time. Let's remember Jason and his family in our prayers. Please continue to pray for all these friends for their speedy recovery. Tom Siobhan, Phil Predis, Bruce Smith, Georgie Dukas, Bill Wall, Bill and Cheryl Otto, Helen Mulvihill, Eileen Toraka, Ilona Toraka, Carolyn Ferry, Joan Schmidt, Rosemary Heiserer and her sister Amelia, Sun Boz and her brother Jung, and Ileana Surf and her family. Let us pray. O oh God of mothers, fathers, and children, no matter who we are, we all are God's children. God loves all of us. On this Mother's Day, 
Help us to rethink about our relationships in our families. We humbly ask the Holy Spirit to come and remake our hearts so we may reflect God's love to all who come our way. On this glorious Sabbath morning, O Lord, we lift up the prayers for all people and all the nations on earth. Help us to live by eternal values and truth. May the Holy Spirit direct the leaders, politicians, scientists, and economists so that they can link us with all who seek your will, peace, justice, harmony, hope, and vision. O oh God, help us. We continue to pray for all those who are suffering with their obstacles, difficulties, and challenges. O oh Jesus, come now and bring comfort to those who agonize over broken relationships and losses of their loved ones and touch those whose bodies need healing. We believe that their lives will be enriched by your love, mercy, and grace. Thank you, Lord, for your presence and involvement in our lives. We pray all this in the name of Emmanuel Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's lecture is Wendy Duffy, and she will read today's scripture lessons. Wendy? Good morning. Our first scripture reading today is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a clear conscience, as did my fathers, when I remember you constantly in my prayers. As I remember your tears, I long night and day to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you. Hence, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. Second reading today is Luke chapter 2, verse 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our next hymn. Come Christians join to sing hymnal number 158.
Greetings, every son and daughter. Happy Mother's Day. It doesn't matter who we are, male or female, sons or daughters, we all have mothers. Without mothers, we wouldn't be present on earth. Of course, we have fathers, too. Fathers, please don't be jealous today. We will talk about you in a few weeks. If your mother is still reachable, what will you do to make this a happy day today? We should thank mom every day, but most of the time, we don't. So, at least once a year, we have a special day for mom so we can celebrate all the help and love she has given us. You are very blessed if you can see and meet your mother without any restrictions these days due to the pandemic situation. Well, I am very sad that I still cannot meet my mom in person even at her nursing home. But I am just so very proud of my mom. She's been through the worst of the pandemic for more than a year without seeing her family. I've always believed that I am living a good, healthy, faithful life because of my mom's sincere prayers and blessings all the time. I imagine that it's especially a sad and emotional day for my sister, Winnie. My younger sister, Winnie, my mother's baby child, hit her big 6 0 birthday about three weeks ago. However, Winnie couldn't invite her mom to her special birthday dinner with her family. She wanted to ask her mother for special blessings. Do you remember my 60th birthday a couple, of years of, a couple of years ago at the church? My happy mom attended my birthday luncheon in pink dress then. However, her health has been rapidly declined with kidney failure, and she had to move to a nursing home with dialysis facilities. My sister Winnie was sad because she missed her mom on her special birthday. However, with the inspired hope, her newlywed daughter, Melody, and her son-in-law, Jason, traveled all the way from California just to, to celebrate Winnie's special birthday. Because of the pandemic situation, we had a small family gathering in the outdoor tent provided by a restaurant. There, Melody, my sister's only daughter, my beloved niece, gave a very touching speech to our family guests, especially to her mother. Honestly, Melody's sharing was one of the most beautiful and honorable tribute to any mother I've ever heard. And then she read a couple of notes from a box, which was full of folded papers. That box she was holding was the collection box of her mother, Winnie's notes. When Melody was in seventh grade, her family moved from New Jersey to Connecticut due to her father's teaching position at Yale University. As a sensitive early teenage girl, changing her school was a challenge. Even though Melody has a very charming, outgoing, cheerful, strong personality, her mother Winnie was so concerned about her daughter as she was adjusting a new home, school, and friends. So every day throughout Melody's seventh and eighth grade years, in Melody's lunchbox, Winnie put an encouraging note and or a loving message to her daughter. I wish I could read all of them to you. 
when I read some of them after Melody's speech, I was crying with the beautiful, genuine, positive, and wise messages from a mom to a daughter. Some are long and some are short. Let me just read one of the shortest ones. Here is the melody. Curly hair, beautiful girl inside and out. That's my girl. Have a wonderful day at school today. Spring is near. Let's have our spiritual renewal as well. Love, Mom. Yes, as her mother's note suggested, Melody turned out to be a beautiful woman inside out with so many virtues, talents, intelligence, and faith. As an only child, Melody was very lucky that she has received all her parents' attention and love. That reminded me the time when I was growing up. As a middle child with an older brother and younger sister, I often grumbled and demanded my mom's full attention and more love. As a working mom, even though she wished to fully devote it to her children, her plates were always full, and she was overwhelmed with so much work. Her daily list of things to do never shrunk, but it got longer and longer. If you grew up with siblings, you probably understand the situation your mother was in too. Every child demands his or her mom's attention and love for everything. On this Mother's Day in particular, we can all be thankful for the many ways that time and sleep starved super mothers everywhere. They keep numerous balls in the air while being pulled in a hundred different directions. I still don't know how they managed their ceaseless multitasking. There are many good role models of mothers in the Bible. Sarah, Rebecca, Hannah, Naomi, and Ruth, Elizabeth, Mary, Timothy's grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice, etc. The list goes on. However, since I can't cover them all due to the time limit, let me just focus on Jesus' mother, Mary, today. How can we miss Mary, Jesus' mother? In today's gospel lesson in Luke chapter 2, 41 through 52, Mary showed a good example of a busy working mother. Do you know how many children she had to take care of? That means how many siblings did Jesus have? According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, 54 through 56, and the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 3, Jesus had at least six siblings, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, as well as at least two unnamed sisters. Including Jesus, Mary had to take care of seven children at least. Can you imagine the minivan mom mentality she had to use those 2,000 years ago? The scene of today's lesson in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 showed only a small segment of a busy mother's life, especially during the holiday season of Passover in her minivan she and her family took Highway 495 back to Nazareth from Jerusalem. With the festival of the Passover now over, her mind races ahead to all the house chores and things to do, cooking, washing, cleaning, sewing, trash disposal, gardening, 
visiting the relatives, negotiating relationships, writing a thank you letter, caring for children. Wait a minute. Caring for children? Oh, where is Jesus? Where is it? She was frantically asked around Jesus' whereabouts among her relatives and friends, but no one seemed to know. Oh, Lord, where is Jesus? After a day away from Jerusalem, Mary and Joseph traced back to Jerusalem. Very fortunately, after three days, they found Jesus in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard Jesus was amazed at his understanding and his answers. By the time Mary and Joseph found Jesus, with a huge relief, Mary said to Jesus, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Then Jesus answered, Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Jesus stayed behind without telling his parents, or he didn't even know his family had left. But definitely, either way, he made his parents worry. However, rather than punishing Jesus, Mary treasured all these things in her heart. Mary had thought about what her son said. Her calm reaction shows that Mary was not a hot-tempered mother who smacked her son first for his nerve-touching behavior. Just the opposite. She was a very considerate, reasonable, thoughtful listener. By listening to her son's claim that I must be in my father's house carefully, she began to see the plan that God has for Jesus, and her openness to this plan enabled Jesus to increase in wisdom and to become the Savior God wants him to be. As we know, Mary went through so much heartache for being the mother of Jesus, God's son, especially Witnessing her son hanging and dying on the cross was the last thing any mother would dream of happening to her. Maybe many mothers would die with a heart attack. Because of Mary's great motherhood, we are here. Without Mary's sacrifice, devotion, obedience, there's no Savior Jesus. No wonder why Catholics put Mary on a high pedestal. We Christians believe that Mary's legacy of faith and love made a huge difference in human history. The world is a different place because of her skills as a mother. Mary's legacy was passed down through countless mothers with a sincere faith and sacrificial love so we can believe in faith and eternal life. Even Apostle Paul in today's epistle lesson in 2 Timothy highlighted the crucial role of a generational transmission of faith and love using Timothy's grandmother Lois and the mother Eunice as an excellent example. Friends, how awesome it is because of all those four mothers in our Christian history, you and I are here. Even in my own family, it was so wonderful to witness the relationship between Mother Winnie and the daughter Melody. More than anything else, our family is blessed by our foremother's legacy of Christian faith and love from generation to generation. 
my great-grandmother to my grandmother, my grandmother to my mother, my mother to my sister and me, and my sister to her daughter. Thanks be to God. It's all God's blessing. I am certain that you and your family have the legacy of Christian faith and love too. Think about it. Now, as the children of God, we all have responsibilities to keep that legacy and pass it down to our children and grandchildren. Let that legacy flow from generation to generation. Today, on Mother's Day, let us think about our mothers, express our gratitude, and shower them with joys and honors. By doing so, you will be blessed as well. Have a happy Mother's Day. Blessings to you all. Amen. Now, let's sing our closing hymn, Celebrate Love, Faith We Sing, 2073. Celebrate love, love, love. Celebrate love, love, love. Celebrate love, so amazing. He's creating his wonderful love in you. We can celebrate his love today. Jesus loves everyone. We can celebrate new life today. Jesus loves everyone. Celebrate. Let us pray. May the blessing of Mother God and Father God, fountain of living water, flow within us as a river of life. May we drink deep of her wisdom. May we never thirst again. May we go through life refreshing many as a sign of healing for all through Jesus, who is life eternal. Amen. Now, let me make a few announcements. I would like to thank those who, in 2021, continue to send in their weekly contributions. If you have not donated in the past, please consider donating to the United Methodist Church of Lake Van Kankama. During this difficult time, your financial help will be very much appreciated. There is an urgent need for healthy blood donors. Be part of the United Methodist Church of Lake Van Kankama's virtual blood drive, Sunday, May 9th through Saturday, May 22nd. To donate, Schedule your appointment by calling the New York Blood Center at 1-800-933-2566 or visit their website, www.nybc.org, donate. Be sure to use our church group code.
code 07003 when registering. Thank you. To better serve the community, our emergency food pantry will be open Tuesday, May 18th between the hours of 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Our food pantry needs the following items. Canned goods such as tuna, chicken, black beans, soup, chicken and beef broth, boxed milk and boxed cereal, peanut butter, decaf instant coffee, tea bags, facial tissue, paper towels, bath soap, shampoo, toothpaste, and toothbrushes. Our church is happy to announce our loaves and fishes soup kitchen is now open every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pick up your pre-packed takeout meal in front of the sanctuary doors. Our thrift shop, Martha's Place, is now open Monday and Tuesday, Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come and see our selection of spring and summer apparel, housewares, jewelry, and keepsakes at bargain prices. My beloved congregation, have a blessed Mother's Day. Until we meet again, please take good care of yourselves and be well. Shalom to you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.